From a modern perspective, the Sony Watchman is a completely ridiculous and useless piece of equipment to have in the modern world. But it should be technically possible to make this thing usable even today. Let's see if we can figure it out. So what we have here is a Sony Watchman model FDL-22. This one was introduced in 1998 at a price of around $130. So not a small investment at the time, but you would have been really cool to have this in your back pocket. Now, with the advent of digital broadcasting and analog signals going by the wayside, this has become obsolete. There's really no use for it in today's world. It doesn't have any type of external antenna input, there's no external AV input on this. It's strictly a broadcast receiving device. But I'm thinking that there should be some way on the inside of this to get a signal into it and make it usable. Now, there's really no practical use for it, so I think we're going to try to do this just because we can and just to see if we can keep this thing alive a little bit longer. So let's get inside of it and see what there is to offer. All right, so what's my plan of attack for this thing? Well. Like I said, there's really no practical use for this. This is more of a project to see if it's even possible to do. And as I mentioned before, there are no external inputs on this for any type of antenna or composite video, anything like that. It just has a DC power adapter jack on this side and a headphone jack on the other. Uh, I want to take a look to see if there's any way we can modify this jack to accept an RF signal in. If so, we'll try that because that would be the easiest way. Uh, if not, we'll have to look at maybe installing a panel mount jack on the outside or even passing a dongle through somehow. Like I said, we're just going to take a look to see if it's even possible. And if it is, we'll dig into it and see what we can come up with. So first thing we'll do, we'll grab some tools and start taking this apart. All right, so we got her flipped upside down here and I've already taken the batteries out of it. We'll take that battery cover out of the way. And all I can see are two screws right here, so we'll see if taking these out will allow us to open up this case any. Hopefully we'll get lucky and it'll be that easy. But with this type of stuff, you never know. There could be one or two screws hidden somewhere. Get those screws out of there. Move those out of the way so we don't lose them. Let's see if this will pop apart. Let's see. Looks like it's wanting to. See if we can get a thumbnail under here and pull that apart. There we go. Starting to come apart. Now one thing that I have noticed is that uh, Sony is pretty good in their service manuals of letting you know where everything's located as far as all the boards and everything. We do have another screw hiding on there, right in front of my eyes. Let's get that out of here. I should have moved that uh, neck lanyard out of the way. Kind of a neat uh, little thing about that neck lan lanyard. It's also the uh, antenna, from what I understand on these. Yeah, it actually uh, has a bonding point right there to that uh, board, so that actually might be a place where we could uh, maybe install an external jack. I'll have to take a look at that. It's only one, only one connector though, so I don't know how that would work as far as grounding. Alright, so let's pull this completely out. It's a pretty simple setup, really. We've got the LCD screen here on the top, speaker right there. Looks like the whole thing is one, two, three circuit boards. Looks like our headphone jack is actually mounted right to the board, so that may not be the best place to, to install something here. 
Let's see if we can gingerly get this board out of here. Let's see what's holding that. We got a small screw right here. We'll take that out. I'm going to be as careful as I can with this. I don't want to destroy it, but I don't think it's going to be the end of the world if we do. It's not like this is really usable for anything at this point anyway. So we've got a couple of boards here. This connector. Let's see if we can pop that connector off and make this a little bit easier to see all right well, let's get uh, get this apart and get zoomed down a little bit where we can take a better look at this thing all right so after looking at this a little bit more I took the uh, panels apart and was looking at the connector traced out that lanyard that goes through the back of it. Like I said, it does act as the uh, antenna for this. And it looks like that's an RF pad right there. And we've got a ground. So I think the easiest way to get this thing to work is going to be to pass some type of a dongle out the back of the case of this because we have the cover where that uh, lanyard would come out. There's not a whole lot of room in there, but I think there's just enough room where we might be able to pass a coax cable through there and maybe solder it to the pad and to a ground and we might be able to get this thing to work. So I'm going to get that threaded through here. We'll get the soldering iron heated up and we'll see if we can make this work on here. Alright, so I don't need anybody telling me about how poor my soldering skills are. I'm just good enough at this to uh, to really get myself in trouble. Now, I've already flowed a little bit onto the end of the uh, coax. I've got a piece of uh, heat shrink on there, so that once we get that on, we don't have to worry about it shorting against anything. And I've already pre-tinned the, uh, pre the pad and the uh, coax so that I can just tack these two together. So there's that connection made. Alright. And we've got our ground here. That's all one big ground pad. So we'll go ahead and uh, see if we can tend those leads. And this is flux core solder for everybody who's curious. Tinned up. Tack that to the ground pad here. All right. All right. Go ahead and get the heat shrink melted down around there. We've got uh, another piece. Down over that. So my goal is to make sure that we don't accidentally short anything out on that board. All right. So there's all that. Make sure we're still connected fine, and we are. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and get all this pulled back through the case, and we'll see what it looks like. All right, so we got all the screws back in the case. We've got our cable feeding through the back. And our RF connector here, our coax on the other end. So conceivably, if we've got all this hooked up correctly and my theory is correct, then we should be able to hook this up to an RF signal, like a VCR or a camera or a modulator 
and we should get some audio and video out of this. So let's see if it worked. Well, if you're watching this, that means that our little mod worked. So we've made this old watchman a little bit more relevant in today's world. We've done our good deed. Let's go back to the studio. Back at the beginning of this video, I said this was basically an exercise just to see if it could be done to modify the Sony Watchman to accept an external source. And I think we did that. I think we've figured out a way to, cheap and dirty and easy, make it work. We've taken this obsolete piece of electronics from 1998, and while it's still obsolete, at least now we can hook it up to a VCR or an RF modulator or a camera or a video game system and get some type of display on it. I never claimed to be an expert in soldering, so I don't need any comments about how terrible it was. I already know that. But if you like this video, if this helped you out, please be sure to like and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything else that we come up with down the road. But for now, that's all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I'll do my best to answer those as they come in. From Vintage Electronics Channel, we'll see you next time.